Hello, class. Okay, just give me one sec. Okay, I'm ready. Hello, hello. Hi, Lupita. Hello. Now I can see Gabby as well. Very good. Okay. Hello, teacher. Hello, Jorge. How are you? I'm fine. Excellent. Very good. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to start with this class in this Thursday. How is your day going, class? How is your day going? Como va su día? How is your day going? Good, bad, busy. What can you tell me about your day? For me, it's busy. <laughs> for you, it's busy. Okay. For you, too. And for Lupita, how is your day going? Okay, your microphone. Su micrófono, no le escuchamos. En Edenilson, how is your day going? Okay. Josué and Rita are in the class already. Well, I already have six students. That's okay. So we can proceed to start with this class. Yesterday, um, we were practicing and we were just introducing a new topic, the last topic from section number five from the pre-intermediate one course. And this topic is about quantifiers. As I mentioned yesterday, this is not a difficult topic, but we really need to pay attention to the expressions about quantifiers and mostly about uh, the scale that we are going to give them. La escala que le vamos a dar, or the percentage, el porcentaje que le damos a cada palabra. If you see, this is the end of section number five. We have been talking about family members, giving a description about what your family do, where do you live, and specific information about your family. I really hope you to be ready to talk about this topic. Whenever someone asks you about your family, you can easily give information about them. Especially, when we talk about family or when we talk about people, it is very useful to give some information using quantifiers. ¿Para qué utilizamos los quantifiers? Si se han fijado, hemos estado describiendo personas. Empezamos describiéndolas con adjetivos, ¿ok? Luego aprendimos cómo comparar no solo personas, sino que también objetos. Y en este caso los quantifiers, the same. Podemos utilizarlo para eh, dar información también sobre personas. Cuando no estamos seguros de la exactitud o del porcentaje exacto de lo que yo estoy hablando. Para eso se utilizan los quantifiers. To give information about percentages, porcentages, about facts, about people, you know? So for that, we have a specific video in the platform that is the last video from section number five. And we are going to go and watch this video so you can have a clear idea about quantifiers. So let's move on to the platform and let's look for section number five, video 5.8. There we have 
a short explanation about this topic. And yesterday we were covering this topic as well. But here we have the explanation. Let's listen. And then we can have some exercises to practice, OK? Here we go, class. Nearly all families have only one child. OK, let me go back. Mo and let's watch. We'll talk about quantifiers. When we don't know the exact percentage of something, we use words like some, most, a few. Stay and learn more quantifiers and how to use them. Okay, let me go back again and listen. listen to this information. This time we'll talk about quantifiers. When we don't know the exact percentage of something. We... When we don't know the exact percentage of something. Let me repeat that again. When we don't know the exact percentage. Esta es la palabra que está utilizando. Look, percentage. What is percentage, class? ¿Qué es esto? Percentage. Percentage. What is this in Spanish? Porcentaje. Porcentaje. So, when are we going to use quantifiers? ¿Cuándo los utilizamos? When we don't know the exact percentage of the information that we are going to present. ¿Quieren una definición? Esa podemos utilizar, ¿ok? When you don't know the exact percentage of the information that you are going to present. ¿Ok? Let me erase this one and let's continue listening to the information. Ok. We use the words like some, most, a few. Stay and learn more quantifiers and how to use them. Ok. Quantifiers. All families have only one child. Nearly all families have only one child. Most families have only one child. Many families are smaller these days. A lot of families are smaller these days. Some families are smaller these days. Okay. Not many couples have more than one child. A few couples have more than one child. Few couples have more than one child. No one gets married before the age of 18. Notice how these quantifiers have an estimated percentage. If you want to make reference to 100%, you may say all. And then you work down the scale depending on the percentage you want to refer to. Follow me in this example. Nearly all women work nowadays. Nearly all, quantifier. Women, plural noun. So in other words, all quantifiers come before plural nouns, except no one. No one gets married before the age of 18. No one, quantifier, gets the verb. As a tip, ask your teacher to remind you about count nouns so you are able to use these quantifiers. Type in two examples using any quantifier you want. Okay, let's go back to this Nearly information. All quantifier. Women. What is she mentioning in this part? There are like two rules that we don't need to forget. Number one, all of the quantifiers, que serían estos, all of these quantifiers, they come before plural nouns. All of the quantifiers come before plural nouns. Look at the examples that we have here. Can you identify the plural nouns? ¿Cuáles son los plurales que tenemos acá? Plural nouns. Miren, primer paso, quantifiers. We are going to write quantifiers. Ok, a excepción de no one. Quedémonos acá. First, we need to write a quantifier. After that, we need to have plural nouns. Families families, couples, okay? Because we're talking about people, families, you know, members of the family. But we can have different situations in this context. We are talking about families, about people. It can be people from El Salvador, people from any other country. 
Number one, ¿qué necesitamos como número uno? ¿Cómo formo una expresión utilizando quantifiers? Number one, the quantifier. Number two, a plural noun. And then we can have the complement. Como que fuera una oración básica. Look, I can have a verb. And then a complement, only one child. This is similar, look, I have a verb in this call. It is way the, the verb to be. I can also compare, look, and have a complement. There is not like a specific rule. Verb, and then I have a complement. In this case, using superlative adjectives. But the basic information is, to have a quantifier and after that, a plural noun. And as an exception, this is the only one that is going to be before a verb. And if you see, this is a verb as if we are talking about he, she, or it, the third person, okay? Because no one, it can be replaced by one of those subjects, he, she, or it, right? Siempre va a ir con la S, okay? Gets, no one gets, nadie se casa antes de los 18. Veamos otra vez la explicación, here we go. Nearly all quantifier, women, plural noun. So in other words, all quantifiers come before plural nouns, except no one. No one gets married before the age of 18. No one, quantifier, gets the verb. As a tip, ask your teacher to remind you about count nouns so you are able to use these quantifiers. Type in two examples using any quantifier you want. Okay, now let's go to practice. Look, I have some examples here using quantifiers. In this case, it's about people from different countries. I have the United States, Brazil, India, people from Sweden, and people from Canada, you see? And what is the information that we want to express? Percentages. Remember that we are going to use quantifiers when we don't know the exact percentage of the information that we are going to present. But let's go back. Antes de hacer esto, mil, ¿cuáles son los quantifiers? Aquí están. All, nearly all, most, many, a lot of, some, not many, few, and no one. Remember these quantifiers. All, nearly all, most, many, a lot of, some, not many, few, and no one. So what can we say? Let me do something. Voy a hacer algo. Give me a second. We are going to complete these exercises using quantifiers, but I'm going to place this scale next to the exercises. Se la voy a poner acá para que podamos tener una referencia. Okay. Veamos cómo nos va con este ejercicio. Aquí está la escala. Next to the exercises, I have five different sentences about percentages. First, let's identify, identify what is the percentage. Identifiquemos el porcentaje. En number one, ¿cuál es el porcentaje? Look. 60%. Percent, 69 percent. In number two, Jorge, what is the percentage? In number two. Uh, 69 percent. In number two, that is in number one. Uh, 7%. Muy bien, aquí está el porcentaje de lo que vamos a expresar. Eden Nilsson, in number three. Number three, 
what is the percentage? Hello, teacher. Uh, oh. Zero. Zero. Zero percent. 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 Mm -hmm. Así se escribe. Y así se pronuncia también. Percent. 69 percent. Seven percent. Okay. Aquí lo tienen en el ejercicio número dos. Por ciento. Okay. Así se pronuncia. Percent. Aunque es una sola palabra. In number four, Gaby, what is the percentage in number four? Forty uh, percent. Forty percent. And in the last one, what is the percentage? Uh, Guadalupe, in number five. Twenty-two percent. Twenty-two percent. Great. This is the first step. ¿Qué es lo segundo que voy a hacer? De acuerdo a mi escala, according to my scale, I am going to identify the correct expression, the correct quantifier. If you see, we have different percentages. Ordenemos los porcentajes de mayor a menor. El primero que tenemos es 69%. Number two, ¿cuál le sigue? Veamos, 20, 22%. Es el ejercicio 5. Luego me sigue, let me see. ¿Cuál le sigue? 69, 22. 40%. Ah, that is before. Cambiemos. Primero va 40 and then 22. What are we missing? 7%. Seven, percent. seven and then zero. zero percent. Seven percent. And the last exercise or example is zero percent. Look, ya los tengo identificados. Ahora que me hace falta. ¿Qué palabra o okay, qué quantifier? es la más exacta o la más cercana para expresar esta información con otras palabras. 69. ¿Cuál usarían ustedes para 69? De acuerdo a mi escala. All, nearly all, most, most. many. Porque va most. casi 69%. Most. Many. Most. Many. Ok. Most and many. That's okay. Si ocupamos most en many. Quedemos acá. 40%. En 40, ¿cuál ocupamos? 40%. De acuerdo a mi escala. Many. Hmm? A lot of. Mm -hmm. A lot of. Or some. Ya baja un poquito, ¿verdad? Yo creería que por acá. Some. Ese está entre 50 y 40%. 22%. Some, también, some. Seven percent. Few. Few, ahí sí, miren. Few people. And zero percent. No one. No one. Very good job. Now let's express these ideas by writing the information in different words. We are not going to use percentages. We are going to use these expressions, quantifiers. ¿Cómo quedaría la número uno? Number one, how it, it is the correct way to express with quantifiers. Let me see, let's try. Si nos equivocamos, no hay problema. Glenda, do you want to try with number one? In the US, 69% of high school students go to college. Express the same idea by using quantifiers. Um, para mí es many. Ok, veamos. ¿Cómo lo escribo? In the US. Oh, this is a period. Reemplacemos 69 por un quantifier. In the US. Many. Many. ¿Qué sigue luego de un quantifier? Una palabra en plural. Many. 
of high school look students this is plural students and what is the complement glenda mm. what's the complement in the us many of high school students go to the college yes go to the college <coughs> Ok, ¿cómo la sintieron? ¿Fácil o difícil de expresar? I guess it's easy, right? It's easy. We are just going to replace the percentage by using a quantifier. Yanira, number two, try to express the same idea but using a quantifier. Number two. Uh, mm. A few, I, <clears throat> few of the people. What is it? Yeah, continue. Few of the people in Brazil are age 65 or older. Okay, let's express it in that way. Few, and then we have the word. Tengamos. La palabra few. plural de inmediato. No le pongamos antes nada. Few people. Few people. Mm -hmm. Brazil. Y en Brasil. Are age 65 and or then, older. Exactly. Are age 65 or older. Look. And now we have the same idea, but using quantifiers. Number three, number three. What do you think about this one? Being number three. Let's have Gustavo, go ahead please. Number three and number four is for Ellen Nilsson. In India, no one, no one people, but before the age of 18. What do you think, class? Do you agree? Do you disagree with his idea? Mm -hmm. Do you want to make a correction or is that okay? Estamos de acuerdo con lo que Gustavo expresó. Yes or no? It's, It's okay. Mm, are you sure? Because I have a correction. I think it's without people. It's only no one. I don't know. No one bought. That's it. ¿Qué dijimos en el video? ¿Qué expresaba en el video la explicación? Que es el único que va antes de un verbo. O digámoslo lo contrario. No one le sigue un verbo. No puede ir ninguna palabra antes. Todos los demás van seguidos por un Nombre en plural, pero no one le sigue un verbo. Por eso no podemos decir no one of the people vote. No, we are going to say no one. And then we have the verb that in this case is vote. No one vote before the age of 18. Okay? Now is correct. The age of 18. Okay, go ahead please. Number four, Ellen Nilsson. I know you're ready. Ellen Nilsson, are you ready? <laughs> Hola, teacher. Hola, hello. Okay, voy a intentar. Yes, I know you can do it. There yeah, are a lot of people in Sweden live life alone okay what do you think class do you agree with his idea do you have <laughs> something to say or is it okay a lot of people in Sweden live alone what do you think about this sentence ¿Qué piensan de esta oración? ¿Está bien? ¿Le quieren cambiar algo? 
o sigue la regla de los quantifiers? What do you think? It's few. Ah, you will use few, not a lot. Yes. Why? It's 40%. Okay, but look, 40. Aquí está few. ¿Será que eh, establecemos o ubicamos 40 por ahí? Uh, Miren aquí, eh, el Nielsen utilizó esta, a lot of. Which one would you use? Okay. A lot of or few? It's a lot of. It's a lot of, yes. Okay. It's okay. So, yes, you did an excellent job, you see? That's okay. Alberto, do you want to try with the last one? Okay, teacher. Uh, in Canada, some the people speak French at home. Okay. In Canada, some people, some people, that's mm -hmm. it. What do you think about this information? ¿Qué piensan de esa información? ¿Será totalmente correcta o no? Do some people speak French? Oh, not many. Not many. Yeah, right. I guess not many, right? Not many people speak French at home because they speak English. Teacher, entonces few es de, digamos, de 0 a 10. Sí, sería esa mi escala. Y, de, y not many sería de 10 a 20. 10 a 20. Saben okay. que no hay un porcentaje como exacto. Si se fijan, la idea se mantiene si ocupamos few or not many. Se mantiene, ¿ok? Porque recuerden, utilizamos quantifiers cuando no estamos seguros del porcentaje exacto. So, it doesn't matter if you express the idea using few or not many. But you need to be um, specific. If you want to be specific, then you're going to use percentages. Si quieren ser súper específicos, utilicen porcentajes. If not, you can use quantifiers. Look, now we have. Now let me ask some of you, but now with El Salvador's information. Same information, but now let's talk about El Salvador. ¿Qué piensan del Salvador y cuáles serían nuestros quantifiers? Let's see. Ivania, number one. ¿Cómo expresaríamos para El Salvador number one? High, high school students go to college. ¿Se acuerdan qué es college? Do you remember what is the meaning of college? ¿Qué era yes. college? Bachillerato. Yes. Technical. No, no es bachillerato. ¿Qué está Technical. diciendo? Technical. Technical. Universidad Muy bien. ¿Será que en nuestro caso todos los de bachillerato van a la universidad? ¿Qué no. pensamos del Salvador? So, what is your opinion about El Salvador? Maybe... 50%? Okay, 50%, probably, right? Mm -hmm. 50. So express that using quantifiers. In El Salvador. Mm, a lot of. Okay. In El Salvador. Ah, okay. Yes. In El Salvador. <laughs> uh, a lot of. Mira, ahí sí, iría como people, o no, tampoco. Eh, high school. High, high school students, the same information. Ah, ah okay, yes. okay. In El Salvador, a lot of high school students go to college. Go to college, yes, a lot of. Yes, because we, we cannot say all, nearly all. No. Sería lo ideal, pero no es nuestra realidad. Now. Let me stop here. Ya se fijaron cómo hicimos. Necesito que vayamos y completemos las mismas ideas in number two, three, four, and five, but with the information about El Salvador. Información del Salvador. Ya tenemos la uno. Ahora ustedes, ¿qué piensan de la dos, tres, cuatro y cinco? Trabajemos en grupos ahorita. I'm going to give you Five minutes, I guess it's okay. So you can talk to your classmates and you can express your ideas about El Salvador.
this is a great practice. So let's go to the groups. Please, this is a speaking time and you can also take some notes so you can have the examples on your notebook. Vamos a practicar, ya les comparto la imagen. Go, please. Ya le envió este. Sí, ahorita estoy viendo si la puedo compartir. Ok, Bye. cool. Eh, teacher, entonces estas mismas preguntas las vamos a adaptar con información no. nuestra, ¿verdad? Como Del Salvador. Salvador. Uh -huh. Exacto. Uh -huh. Veamos cómo nos quedan los porcentajes. Creo que van a cambiar definitivamente. Uh -huh. Yes, right. Okay. <risa> La, la segunda es como la población, en qué edad, en qué rango andamos, ¿verdad? Ya, yeah, exacto. 65. Ya vi que andamos como en 64, <ríe> según uh -huh. el último estudio. Vaya, veamos. Ok. Vaya. Number one, high school, student to college. Mm. ¿Lo ya está? Sí, aquí está. Tome una foto y me lo pase para yo tomar. Eh, es este um, técnico, ¿verdad? Teacher en la primera. Estudios técnicos. Univers universitario. Yeah, universitario. You, universitario. It doesn't matter to say college, yeah. Oh, es que lo confundo con. ¿Con qué? ¿Con bachillerato? No, pensé que. ¿Cómo era el técnico? Sí, college la llamamos a, eh, como estudios técnicos. Mm. Uh -huh. Como los que son de dos años, los que son uh -huh. no tanto carreras universitarias. Uh -huh. So, yes. That's it. Uh -huh. Bueno. Entonces. ¿Cómo? Many people in El Salvador are... Okay, let me listen to you. Do you have questions about these ideas? Teacher, in the question, in, yeah, I have a question. In yes. the number two. Okay. Um, y se refiere, digamos, así como a los, la edad ya mayor o como la población en la que ronda? Es la población, ajá. Por ejemplo, ¿qué tenemos más en El Salvador? Hay más adultos, más jóvenes, más Por ancianos, mí. más niños. Por mí, uh -huh. Marjan. So let's take this one. Uh, tomemos este como referencia. Eh, people from 61 or, or older. ¿Cuál será nuestro porcentaje de personas que tienen entre 65 y más años? What is the percentage in El Salvador? Is it 7%? No, creo que solo son 7%. I guess no, we have no. more. No, it's more. It's more, right? For so, me, yes. for me, many people in El Salvador. Many. Ah, exactly. Yes. So you see? Como no sabemos el porcentaje exacto, para eso utilizamos quantifiers para expresar un estimado. 
because we don't know. No estamos seguros de cuánto es. So what expression are we going to use? Entonces sería many the people. Many. It many can be people. many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perdón. Yes. <coughs> many the people in El Salvador. Solo dejémosle people. Recuerden, es el people. quantifier y luego la palabra en ah, plural. Okay, okay. No hay nada many más antes people. de eso. Many people. people. Ningún artículo y otra palabra antes. No. Many people. That's it. Great. I have another question. What is it? Uh, it's possible in the number one. Um, many high school students go to college, college in the U.S. Oh, uh, is in the in the US many students go to college many, many high school students go to college or podría ser most most yeah most but remember 69 sí puede ser most o puede ser many tal vez many Not no most. digamos el in the US podría quedar al final o al inicio no habría ningún problema there's no problem no hay problema ah, ah, there's okay. no problem lo ah, único okay. que tiene que ir junto recordemos es la palabra el quantifier y luego le sigue el, el nombre uh -huh. el, lo demás no importa el otro orden y das ah, okay. okay excellent Thank you. okay continue okay Linda number three Vaya, Giorgito. You finish? No, todavía no. Todavía no. Okay. Pueden compartir Bye. pantalla. Acuérdense. Giorginio. In Canada. Entonces sería. In El Salvador. Ahí calculando, quizás lo voy a poner. Ajá. Exacto. This big French. Porque no tengo una estadística de las personas. No en la bien. cuatro, teacher. Uh -huh. Quizás quizá sería un... Not many. No muchos. Ok, not many. Uh -huh. Thank you, teacher. Ok. Remember, para cuando no estamos oh, seguros del porcentaje, porque en este caso no sabemos toda esta información en exactitud. Para eso utilizamos los quantifiers. Para dar un estimado, una idea cercana, nada más. Ok. Yes, very good job. ¿En qué sería? No one. No. En el 40% of the people in El Salvador live alone. Not many people in El Salvador live alone. La cuatro, la cuatro, not many of people in El Salvador live, live alone. Uh -huh. Y en las cinco. Yes. Esa, a mí me toca. Jordito. Hola. A mí me toca. No, esa, si quieren, veámosla entre todos. Esta es en Canadá. Es... In Sería en El Salvador, no one. En El Salvador. French at home. Yes. Bueno, hoy está aumentando el porcentaje de personas. Que hablan en francés. Sí, ya no solo el inglés, muchos están aprendiendo francés. Podríamos ponerle... Pero... Song. But it says at home, pero dice en casa. At home. Ah, en casa. Yes, at home. Ah, sí, por eso no. le decía. So yeah, no, one. One. no one. I guess no one, no. No one. <laughs> Not sí, even sí. English, you know. Uh -huh. We speak only I'm Spanish, a... right? Mm -hmm. No one. Yeah, no one. <laughs> mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no one speaks. Sería en El Salvador, no one speaks French at Acu home. Ajá, acuérdense que el verbo yeah. quedaría speaks. 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 Mm -hmm. No one. No one speaks. Speak, ya no ponemos people ahí. ¿eh? Sí, o sea, no one, no, speak no, French. no, speaks Ajá. French at home, muy bien, porque estamos Sí, porque estamos no haciendo la, la excepción, ¿verdad? La excepción con no one. Uh -huh. Vaya, y, entonces. Y así quedaría, muy bien, clase. 
Salvador, no one speaks. In El Salvador, no one speaks French <laughs> at home. No one, nadie. No okay. one speaks French mm -hmm. at home. Yes. <clears throat> Let's go back. Hmm? Okay, there you come. Great job. I was listening to some of you. And yes, you were making use of the quantifiers in a correct way. Solo algunas correcciones que tengo que hacer, pero pequeñísimas. Aquí vamos. First, let me listen. Quiero escucharlos. En number one, ya lo habíamos dicho. Number two, veamos el porcentaje de personas, people that are age 65 or older. 65 or older. Carlos, what is your idea about people that are age 65 or older? Give me your sentence, please. Okay, it means uh, for one in El Salvador, most higher school students go to the college. Most. Okay, how about number two? Excellent, number one. Uh, number two, some people in El Salvador. Uh, are either 65 or older. Are 65 or older. Okay, some or most. Some. Some. ¿Quién más tiene la misma opinión? Some or do you have a different opinion? What is your opinion about this one? I have a different opinion because I uh, check uh, statistics, teacher. Statistics. Statistic. Um, uh, say that people in El Salvador are, uh, it's a few people. Just few people. Okay. About a nine percent, nine to ten percent. Really, nine to ten percent. Okay. So for the the twenty twenty. Uh, 20 and no 20 and 20 20 uh, around 20 right uh, 20 yeah so you see so yes few people are 65 or older wow interesting thank you so much jorge for sharing that information Number three, what is your opinion about number three? Let me see. Rita. And number four is for Sammy, Samuel, please. Number three, Rita, please, go. Number three, um, no one in, in the country is, is necessary uh, mm -hmm. to have the 18. Exactly. To be 18. Uh-huh. And so the sentences say um, no one in El Salvador, no one um the people I know um no one but the before the age of 18. 
Okay, no one bow or boats. Boat. Boat. Remember, el verbo tiene que quedar así. No one boats no. before the age of 18. There we go. Excellent job. Samuel, number four. Samuel is ah, he's on a call. Come on, Samuel. Josue, number four. Aha, Samuel, who are you talking to? ¿A quién está llamando Samuel? Josué, ¿es Josué there? Hello, teacher. Vamos, con la cuatro y Samuel la cinco. Ok. <laughs> Go, please. Um, ok. Uh, not many people uh, in El Salvador live uh, alone. Ok, not many people. Yes, right? Not many people in El Salvador Live alone. I like it. I like your idea. Samuel, number five, please. Hello. <laughs> uh, in the Salvador, no one people speak English or Homer. Okay. Veamos. Clase, do you have a correction? Do you have any other idea? Yes, without people. Ah, ¿por qué? Cuando utilizamos no one, ¿qué le sigue? The verb. The verb. So in this case, is like this. No one speaks French at home. No, right? No one speaks French at home because this is not an official language in El Salvador. That's why. How about Spanish? ¿Cuántos hablan Spanish at home? All. Uh -huh. All. <laughs> All families speak uh, Spanish at home. So you see the differences? ¿Qué piensan del English? How many people? ¿Cuántos hablarán inglés en casa? Few. Few. Not many. Right? Not, few. Many, Not many. Not many. Few. Exactly. Not many, few, but you see, the percentages are different. Now let me stop sharing this one. ¿Cómo nos sentimos con este tema? Expresando porcentajes en inglés con quantifiers. ¿Cómo sienten el tema? Easy, difficult. Not that easy. It's a little confused, but... Uh, Where? In what part? In what sense? Puede servir mucho en una conversación. ¿En qué sentido es confuso? De los porcentajes, de asignar los porcentajes. Tenemos que manejar información. No, no realmente de porcentaje, ¿verdad? Pero okay. más o menos. Tenemos que tener una noción de, de, de lo que Ex estamos. There we go. Esa palabra, una noción. Recuerden que no es que tenemos que ser exactos. Para eso utilizamos quantifiers. Tal vez lo que sí necesitamos entender es cómo van de mayor a menor. El más fácil es all y el 0% no one. Después de eso... Tratar de medir como la escala, darle un porcentaje a cada uno. But yes, it's very useful, muy útil cuando no sabemos la información exacta. If you see in the platform, you have this exercise and it is expressing percentages, but the exercise is asking for you to complete the information using quantifiers. Y si se fijan, dice, the quantifier closest in mini. El que más se acerca. No nos dice uno exactamente. Let's see. 50%. ¿Cuál sería el quantifier que más se acerca? A 50%. A lot of, few, or all. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of, of, few, or all. Ok, veamos esto. 50%. That's it. Number two, 87%. Not many, some, or nearly all. ¿Cuál será nuestra respuesta acá? Miren, not many, some, and nearly all. Nearly all. Nearly all. Okay, nearly all, exactly. Zero percent, this is so easy. No one. No one, pero... Luego tenemos, sí, esta es la más cercana. No one. 35%. 35%. Some, few, or most. Some. Okay. 
Let's click on this one. 78%. What do you think about 78%? Most, not many, or old? Most. Most, right? So let's see. Veamos si estamos bien. Let me check. That's it. You see? This is just an estimate. It's an estimate. Okay, class. Now we have a few minutes. Tenemos pocos minutes. We have a few minutes so we can go and check the last uh, evaluation. Section number five, the final exam. Look, in the case that you haven't complete these exercises, this is the time for you to complete. Ayer vimos esta, ¿verdad? Vámonos a la letra C. Multiple choice sentences. Escojan la palabra correcta. Si se fijan en este caso, ¿qué tipo de palabras tenemos en las opciones? Son nombres y verbos. Nouns and verbs. What type of information is this one? Son oraciones. En este caso, afirmativas. Number one. Jay does every morning before breakfast. Ajá. Aquí esto no es con un auxiliar, sino que es el verbo para la tercera persona. Please, do not confuse this one. No es el auxiliar, sino es el verbo conjugado para la tercera persona. So, what does he do? ¿Qué hace cada mañana before breakfast? Jay does yoga, football, or jogging. Yoga. ¿Qué verbo utilizamos para fútbol en jogging? Any idea? Uh -huh. Place. Decimos play fútbol en sí. esta es go. Go jogging. Estos son los verbos. En do yoga. Miren, diferentes verbos para cada ejercicio. Do Play and go. This is just extra information. Very good. In number two, how often, how often do you swim in, in the summer? Go, do, or play? Do we go. say go swimming, do swimming, or play swimming? Go. Go. You see? Go swimming. Very good. Go running. Okay, go hiking. Those are the verbs. I sometimes play with my friends. Play. play. Baseball. Exactly. Baseball. ¿Qué verbos utiliza con inline skating and aerobics? ¿Qué verbo sería el más indicado? Bien. Do, do y inline skating. Este es como patinaje. Yes, any idea? ¿Qué verbo utilizo para inline skating? Go, go teacher. Go. Mm -hmm. go. Go. Go inline skating, do aerobics and play baseball. Aquí están los tres ejemplos. Miren. Go, do, and play. Veamos cómo nos quedó. Let's click on submit. Ahí están. Están correctos. Ok. Reading. This is a very short reading. And it's about this girl. Her name is Audrey Tautu. ¿Qué dice de Audrey? Si se fijan, esta es una... Eh, línea o una descripción desde cuando ella nació. She was born in 1978. And then we have different activities or different events about this girl's life. It says that you are going to read the article and then you need to check. Después marcan las respuestas correctas. How many questions do we have? Or how many options do we have for? Let's see. Si no quieren leer todo el artículo, existe esta técnica en inglés. Identifico la información que necesito 
y me voy a la lectura y busco la información específica. Okay? This is very specific. So number one, in high school, acts, actúa in high school. Veamos en qué parte está hablando de high school. Let me see what year is it giving us information about high school. ¿En qué año está hablando de high school? Let me make it bigger. Está muy pequeño esta información. Aquí está. 1978, no. 1980s and 90s. Aquí está, viene high school. Ahí está la información. 1980s and 90s. Audrey acts in plays, especially comedies in high school. After that, she goes to acting school. ¿Qué nos pide completar? In high school, Audrey acts in plays, on television, or in movies. ¿Qué información está dando? On television. ¿Qué es un play? ¿Saben qué es un play? <risa> Esto no es el verbo. Esto se hace en el teatro, los plays, así se le llama. Las obras de teatro se le llama plays. Esto es un nombre. Como nombre significa actuación, presentación. Como verbo es jugar o tocar. Okay? So, plays. Number two, many Americans like the movie. Many Americans like the movie. And then we have three different options. Busquemos la información específica. Many Americans like the movie. Busquen la información. Where is the information? Let me bring you back. Les trato otra vez las opciones, miren. We have three different options. What is great? Uh -huh. Where is the information? What year is it? 2000-2002. La información está en el tercer párrafo. Voy a usar. Voy a usar. Amelia. Ajá. Si se fijan, aquí está la información Amelia. en diferentes palabras. No es exactamente. Dice Amelie o Amelie. No sé cómo se leerá en el francés. Y aquí dice. Becomes popular in many countries, including in the United States. Aquí está la respuesta. Se convierte o es famosa en los Estados Unidos. ¿Cuál es la que está hablando? Es de Amelie. Vamos y elijamos la respuesta correcta. Look. Audrey acts in three movies. Actúa en tres películas. ¿En qué año? Let's look for the information. ¿En qué parte es esa información? Tres. Películas, look, The Spanish Department, es la primera, He Loves Me, es la segunda, and Very, very, very pretty, pretty, pretty things. things, tres películas, ¿en qué año es? What year is it? 2003. In her movies, Audrey usually speaks, ¿qué idioma habla usualmente en las películas? English. Are you sure? French. It's not English. No es inglés. ¿Qué Can dice acá? This question? is the first time she speaks English in a movie. Es la primera vez que habla inglés en una película. Nos pregunta qué idioma habla en las películas. Thank you. 
Mira. Usualmente habla, ¿qué habla en sus películas? English, French. Spanish or French. 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 Yes, right. ¿Por qué creen que habla francés? Why does she speak French in her movies? Because she because is French. Exactly, because she's French. a French girl and she was born in France. Was born French. She was born in France. Very good. She's a French girl. So, of course, she speaks French. You see? Otro tipo de lectura. Y ahí están las respuestas. In place, Amelie, 2003 and French. Veamos si está correcto. Yes, it is. Y ahí tenemos las secciones de el final exam. ¿Algún ejercicio que les haya quedado pendiente? ¿O cómo estamos con la plataforma? Let me ask you. Miss. Yes, Carlos. Uh, I talk about um, the lunch with other partners in the office. The problem is that Mrs. Nicole Najarro, mm -hmm. um, she, uh, it's here, how do you say it's here? Uh, requires. She demands. required the, 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 the exercise and platform the, on, on English. The problem is, is that we advance um, when no time in the class, uh, the poems, as an explanation that we usually, in, in the case, that I think that Mrs. Harrow, uh, she think we, we are a student the class and after, uh, um, the exercise the platform. Okay. So what would you recommend, you know, as an advice? Because I can talk to, to them. What is your recommendation? Yes, I understand because it's the next uh, uh, model, next level. Model mm -hmm. is either uh, required. Right. So what is your opinion? Si quieren, eh, no hay problema. Let me do something. Let me do something. Okay, we are going to stop the class here.